Good morning. You know, we really are in a crisis globally, in a crisis as a nation, crisis as a city, as we hear the number of COVID cases rising. And I think it would be rare that there's not one among us who knows somebody directly or indirectly who's not been affected or infected uh, by the COVID situation. And as uh, disciples of Jesus, <clears throat> we can have only one worldview, and that's biblical. And what that means is that we see everything in and around our lives and see everything in the world in the light of God's word. And what that simply means is that as we gain better and deeper understanding of God's word, we're able to see everything the way God wants us to see things. We see ourselves, we see our families, we see our city and the nations, we see the kind of situation that we are in, in according to the understanding that the Bible gives us. And so as we uh, increase our understanding of God's word, we're able to see not only things around us in the light of God's word, but we're able to foremostly and firstly see the Lord. We see his heart. We understand his plans and we understand his ways so that we as his people are able to respond in a manner that is right, that is pleasing in his sight. And we are able to be blessed and be a blessing as we are commanded and called to be. And as we acknowledge the situation that is around us, <clears throat> I believe personally that we are in the end of the end times. And uh, I uh, hopefully would be planning uh, an evening where we can do a study on eschatology. And that's basically the study of the end times. And if you are part of the live group, we're actually on our series on systematic theology. And towards the latter part would be a chapter or a topic that's dedicated to uh, the end times, just a chapter. But I look forward to actually having an evening where we would be looking at the end times. And one of the things that we will be basically seeing is that both the plan of God and the schemes of the enemy will intensify in these coming days. But we know the end from the beginning. We know who is going to be the winner. It's God and his people. But how we are going to live and respond in the present is crucial for us, not only for now, but even for eternity. And so in view of the current situation of, of knowing that how um, we know there are so many people who are unwell, you know, the whole, almost the whole of yesterday, today, I've been just getting messages where this one's not well, this one has been diagnosed as COVID positive. And overall, even this, just the damaging consequences of the COVID situation uh, over people that we know and over, um, you know, even over our nation. And that's why we took time this morning to pray about the situation. But I want to just right now, um, share a few personal practical requests or encouragement. And after that, I just want to spend a few minutes in meditating on a, what I think would be a very important passage of scripture that will throw light on how we need to respond as a people of God. But before that, I just have some very practical uh, requests that I want to put forth right now. And the first thing I want to request is I want to encourage all of us, beginning with myself, that we abide in the Lord, that we stay close to the Lord in this situation, in this season of our life. We, we're called to do that. We're commanded to do that in every day, at every season of our life. But especially in this time, I want to request you, abide in the Lord. And your spiritual disciplines are important for us. No matter what we're going through, I want to request you that stay close to the Lord through daily worship, daily prayer, the reading and the meditation and the study of God's word. That's how we abide in Jesus, abide in him. You know, everything else is sinking sand, but Christ is the solid rock on which we stand. 
The second thing I want to request is stay connected to your family. If your family is not living with you, if your parents are away, you have siblings who are in a different city or a different part of the world, or, or even in, in your own home, stay connected, be communicative, stay connected with your family, with your relatives, with your close friends, with your life group members, with your church community. I want to request you to stay connected with people. We have been wired and designed to be individuals who survive and thrive when only we are connected to people. So I'm not saying that we be entirely dependent on others, and I'm surely not encouraging that we be independent of others, but let's be interdependent. Let's be connected in very authentic, genuine ways. And if you need anything, if you need help, please ask. Don't assume that people will know or that people will get the feelers that you send. Please ask for help from your family, relatives, friends, as a church, as life group members. Reach out to us. Be any kind of help. We cannot uh, take the place of the Lord in your life. And each one have their own limitations. But we can try to do whatever we can. And as we all come together around you, you know, maybe God would do something that would be uh, needed and precious in your life. So the first thing, abide in the Lord. Number two, stay connected. Number three, take care, take practical precautions. Uh, don't be careless. Don't be casual. Uh, take all practical precautions that you need to, to minimize the possibility of getting an infection. So you go out, come back, wash your hands, use a sanitizer, have a shower before you meet the people in the home. Just practical things, you know. I don't want to sound like a doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm a pastor, but uh, I think by now, almost all of us would know uh, what kind of precautions uh, and protocols you need to follow for that. The next thing is, do, uh, is eat well, um, you know, do exercises, take walks, take supplements or vitamins that you need, and uh, please do those things in order to stay fit and healthy. So uh, in case, you know, something happens, you would be able to overcome it uh, in strength and not in weakness. So please eat well, exercise, take supplements um, if you can, and stay healthy. You know, the next thing, please don't listen to lies. Uh, please don't uh, encourage exaggerations. Be discerning, abide in the truth, live wisely. So don't listen to lies, uh, even, <clears throat> even interpersonally. You know, abide in the truth, beloved. Let's be a people of truth. Don't exaggerate. Uh, be discerning and live wisely. Even, even the kind of people that you are connected with them. And as I said, that be connected. You know, you know, the Bible encourages us to be discerning about our friendships. You know, even to be discerning about the kind of people that who are who we are going to allow to influence in and over our lives. Who we're going to give a voice of authority or influence upon our life. Be be discerning. Associate with the godly. Associate with people who will lift you up, build you up. In God, you know, there are different kinds of relationship. Review, recalibrate your relationships so that you are not overcome by evil, but you overcome evil with good. Okay. And we will talk about that more on another day. I, I want to elaborate on what I said. Please pray for people who are unwell. Please pray for people who are affected uh, by this situation and reach out to people, those who are in need. Let us love not just in word, but let us love in deed. A lot of people who get away by saying, I love you, I care about you, you know, I think about you, but do nothing about it. Uh, don't be in that camp of people. Be people of action, you know, reach out to people in, in deed, you know, go meet them. You know, if you can help somebody financially who's in a really difficult situation, provide groceries, give a call, keep in touch with people and pray for people. Get on the phone, pray for people, you know, be part of the Caleb prayer groups that we formed across in the live groups. Pray for one another. We need prayer to increase more than ever before. So please pray and please reach out to others who are in need. Love in deed and not just in word. Yeah? And very importantly, share the gospel, beloved. You know, there are people who have unfortunately, maybe there are those who in the timing of God have left this earth and have moved into eternity. And I request you for your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, share the gospel. You know, we're getting ready to run our next season of Alpha on the first week of May. We, we are excited about it. And we are excited not about Alpha, but the opportunity that we're going to get to share the gospel 
with our loved ones and friends. And, and that's what makes Alpha interesting and exciting. And so on the first week of May, we're getting ready to run Alpha. And if you want to know more about Alpha, get in touch with me. If you want to know how to run it, get in touch with your pastors and uh, get in touch with any, any, anybody who has already run an Alpha or you know is going to run an Alpha. And we will share more, uh, more about it with you. But share the gospel. Share your testimony with people. Let people get the opportunity to hear the gospel, you know, before something really decisive happens in their life. I want to now, uh, let me just quickly um, uh, recollect what I've just spoken. And firstly, I said was abide in the Lord. Secondly, stay connected to people around you, to your family, relatives, your life group members. Number three, um, uh, take care, take practical precautions, follow protocols. Fourthly, eat well, exercise, take vitamin supplements. Number five, um, don't listen to lies and exaggerations. Uh, you know, keep the unity of the spirit, be discerning and live wisely. Uh, six, please pray for people who are in need, people who are affected and unwell, and reach out to those who are in need, love and word, love and love more indeed. And last but not the least, I've encouraged you to share the gospel. Share the gospel. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate, especially with your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues, people you know whom God has sovereignly brought in your life. If you want to know more about Alpha, please get in touch with us as we get ready to run our next season on the first week of May. I want to take us into a scripture meditation right now. Very important, short scripture meditation and <clears throat> come with me to the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, the book of Numbers chapter 16 and verses 41 to 15. The book of Numbers chapter 16 verses 41 to 15 and there is an entire background of uh, a very uh, difficult and painful situation that uh, developed during the time of Moses. And, uh, and the people of Israel. And we don't have time to go into that uh, section of what were the developments that led to the situation uh, that we're going to read about. But it was a very serious uh, situation that developed. And Moses was faced with a severe resistance and opposition to his leadership. And it affected not just Moses or a few couple of hundred people, but it affected the entire nation of Israel. And... Uh, as the situation developed, there were consequences that began to build up. And uh, we come to this passage in, in, in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 41 to 50. And by now, the situation has cascaded. It has, it, the, you know, the rivers have overflown the banks, and now it is in, into the entire camp of Israel. They're in the wilderness. They've come out of Egypt. They're headed towards the promised land. But there are all these internal issues of leadership and disunity that is building up. And it comes to a point where the, uh, a lot of people um, in the nation of Israel begin to grumble and murmur and speak against Moses and, and try to take a position of resisting him and uh, being disrespectful towards him. In the, and uh, at such a time, you know, a plague breaks out in the camp. And uh, I kind of want to bring that correlation with the situation that we are facing, you know, that there is a plague. Uh, that has broken in this camp of Israel. And let us see what is the attitude and the response of Moses and the men uh, who are godly, who are on the side of the Lord. What do they do? Now, always remember this, that it's very important that we understand the heart of the Lord and the heart of the Lord for his people, even the people who are against him, is not that they would perish and be destroyed, but the heart of the Lord is that people would not perish, but be saved. God always wants his mercy to triumph over judgment. But please don't be mistaken. Judgment comes. Justice comes. Judgment comes. And we need to know that. We cannot replace one with the other. But we can hope and take steps that mercy will triumph over judgment, that mercy will overtake the judgment and justice. And so what happens in the situation is that the plague breaks out because people begin to grumble and murmur and understand it was not merely a situation in isolation that happened over there. It was a series of serious developments that happened uh, prior to this uh, passage that we're going to read. And, and the Lord said, enough, 
I'm letting out a plague now. And, and let's see what uh, Moses and, uh, and uh, Aaron do. And the reason, and here's the point, beloved, the reason they, they knew that this was the right thing to do was because they knew that God is a God of mercy, that God is a good God. He's a great God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. In fact, in another place in the book of Ezekiel, God says, I do not delight in, in, in the judgment of the wicked. I do not delight that the wicked be destroyed. God does not delight, beloved, in seeing people being destroyed. God in his mercy wants to save people. And only eternity will reveal what is the good, the absolute you know, good and amazing things that God has done uh, you know, in this COVID situation globally. You know, what God, what is the good that has come out? Because God so loved and loves the world, beloved. You know, and that's why he gave his only begotten son. But let us now, by way of this passage that we're going to read, understand what we need to do as a people of God in this situation. I'm going to read from you. Please join me in the book of Numbers, again in the Old Testament. Chapter 16, verses 41 onwards till verse 15. But on the next day, all the congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, saying, you are the ones who have caused the death of the Lord's people. It came about, however, when the congregation had assembled against Moses and Aaron, that they turned towards the tent of meeting, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron came to the front of the tent of the meeting, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Get away from among this congregation that I may consume them instantly. Then they, that is Moses and Aaron, fell on their faces. Moses said to Aaron, take your censer, put in it fire from the altar and lay incense on it. Then bring it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone forth from the Lord. The plague has begun. Then, then Aaron took it as Moses had spoken, and ran into the midst of the assembly, for behold, the plague had begun among the people. So he put on the incense and made atonement for the people. He took his stand between the dead and the living, so that the plague was checked. But those who died by the plague were 14,700, besides those who died earlier on account of Korah. Then Aaron returned to Moses at the doorway of the tent of the meeting, for the plague had been checked. The important verse for us is verse 48, and it speaks about how Aaron responded to Moses' instruction. And it says, he took his stand between the dead and the living so that the plague was checked. I believe that's the response that the Lord wants us to have in this situation, beloved, God wants his people, God wants his children, his servants to take our stand in between the dead and the living. And how do we do that? And why should we do that? Let me begin by first sharing why I think we should do it. I believe that God wants us to do that because it is his heart to save people. It is his heart that people should not be destroyed. God is a good God. And he cares, yes, for his children, but he also cares for those who are not yet his children. And God desires that they be saved. So what should his children do? Well, take their stand. We have no standing on our own apart from our standing in the Lord Jesus Christ before God Almighty. So whether we are called to pray or whether we can bless, it is because and only on because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. You know, Jesus has called us to pray. So as mediators, little mediators, Christians, like right? little Christos, we're called to abide in Jesus, abide in his suffering, his finished work on the cross, you know, that he died for our sins and he died for the sins of the whole world, not just ours. And he rose again from the dead, dead and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us and for the world. And so we take our stand in him and him alone. And we, from that place, take our stand between the living and the dead. And what do we do? 
Well, what Aaron did, as instructed by Moses, was take the censer, put the fire from the altar, the coals, put the incense on it. And we know it clearly from a study of the Old Testament pattern of temple worship and from the tabernacle that that simply meant was the prayers, the prayers of the saints, the censer, the incense was the prayers of the people of God. And so we need to take our stand over there and pray to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, let this COVID situation come to an end. Let us pray that God, what is your plan, your sovereign plan, your good plans would unfold in greater intensity and in the power of the Holy Spirit, resulting in the salvation of thousands upon thousands. Lord, in our own city, in our own nation and the nations of the world. Oh God, let your church go forth and let us minister to the needs of the people. Let us be your hands. Let us be your feet. Let us reveal your heart to people. And as we take that stand in prayer and in action, I believe that the good plans of God will begin to unfold and cause his will and his ways to be made known to all the earth. And so beloved, just to summarize the situation, why do we need to do this? Because God is a good God because God is a God of love and justice. And we know that every such situation of sickness, of curse, of disease, of plagues, we know that it's directly a result of sin. Now, is this particular thing a result of sin? Maybe, most probably of anything specific. We know that wickedness is increasing all over the world. And we know that such things happen. Natural disasters are only going to increase because of the wickedness that is rising across the earth. Immorality, idolatry is an increase. Um, but we know that God wants to do his work in this situation. And therefore, let us align with the ways and the plans of God. And so therefore, we have the confidence to take our stand in the situation, knowing that God is a good God. He wants to do good. We are his hands and feet. We are his body. We are his people. We are his temple. And let us take our stand. So what do we do now practically? You know, one is that, I want to make this simple so that it, you know, it, is, it is practical uh, for us. So acknowledge the lordship of Jesus in everything. Acknowledge his lordship in prayer, in declaration. You know, his love, his sacrifice, his goodness, his power. Acknowledge the lordship of Jesus, you know, and declare it in prayer. Declare it in prayer, declare it in praise, declare it in blessing. You know, acknowledge his lordship, acknowledge the lordship of the Father, acknowledge the lordship of the Holy Spirit. And that's the first thing we need to do, beloved. Secondly, acknowledge the gift and the responsibility of prayer, beloved. We have a gift. That gift is called prayer. Remember what Jesus said clearly, whatever you ask the Father in my name, believing you will receive it. The prayers of the righteous avail much, wrote James in his epistle. And so, beloved, this is not just a gift that we can, we can choose to use or not to use. No, it's a responsibility. Every gift that comes from the Lord comes as a privilege, yes, as grace, but also as a responsibility. So let us acknowledge the responsibility that we have to take that sense of and to run in and take our stand in prayer. As we pray, God will answer, beloved. God will do mighty things. And, and he will do it in a way that his name is glorified. And so uh, let us take our stand in prayer and even thirdly in action. Do good, beloved. Do good to people. You know, help where you can. If you think that we can do something as a church, get in touch with our pastors. If there are some things I think we need to do individually, there's some things we, that we can do as a life group, you know. And so, beloved, let's get into action, praying for people getting in touch with people who are in need. And fourthly, what we're going to do is we're going to declare a day of prayer and fasting this week. So you'll get a message from us uh, by tomorrow morning, and we're going to declare a day of prayer and fasting specifically with the COVID situation that is developing. So beloved, uh, let us do what Aaron did. Let us do what, what Moses revealed by his instructions, the heart of the Lord. Let us take a stand between the living and the dead. Beloved, as Utsav, as a church community, let us be salt and light. You know, a true community of true disciples of Jesus. And surely God wants us to do something very important in this situation that will cause his kingdom to come and his will.
to be done. Amen. The Lord bless you and have a blessed week and let us be a blessing to people around us. The Lord bless you.